Hey, I'm Nicholas. I'm an industrial design student, and today we are going to start to develop and design a watch from scratch. I have always wanted to design my own watch. Last year, I actually tried to learn about watchmaking, and to no one's surprise, it was extremely difficult. I looked up a company called Rotate Watches. They are a brand that allows you to learn about how watches work. Rotate Watches sell what are called movements. A movement is a little metal disc inside of a watch that provides the mechanism and the function. They allow watches to tick. You and I don't have to worry as much about how to make our watch function. We can focus on the aesthetic and kind of fitting parts to the movement. I reached out to them because I'm genuinely interested in their movements and I wanted to learn more about them. Because I told them that I'm making this series and I wanted you guys to be able to follow along, they kindly offered 10% off using the code Nicholas starting on June 26th. This code will be for all of the products on their store, so if you want to get your own movement and follow along with me in this series to make your own watch, that would be awesome. Rotate Watches is not sponsoring this video and I'm not being paid to say any of this. I'm just really looking forward to using their movements to make a watch. Today, since this is just the first episode of the series, we can do some sketches and maybe make some prints to see what ideas we can come up with. I'm gonna be doing my sketches on my iPad using Sketchbook Pro, but you can also just do it with a pen and paper, um, just whatever you have to get your ideas out. You can also use 3D printing services like Shapeways or Make Labs if you don't have a printer at home. It will just take a little bit longer. Everything that I do in this series will be accessible to you in some way so that you can follow along. So let's hop into some sketches and we'll see what ideas we can come up with. Okay, so I've loaded up Sketchbook. Um, I just did a little bit of a little bit of research, so I just put a bunch of pictures on a layer. Um, these are not my photos. I just grabbed a bunch of screenshots from Pinterest just to see what kinds of graphic elements I like. I find that when I'm designing a product that's already so abundant in the world already, such as a watch, it can be really difficult to design something that um, isn't so stereotypical. So I tried to find a bunch of things, not necessarily watches, but just a bunch of patterns and graphic elements that I think look really good and that maybe I could put them in a design of a watch. So these are not my photos. I just grabbed a bunch of screenshots from Pinterest. Um, and so now I will be referencing those quite a bit. Um, and so now I'm just gonna start sketching. Um, I do, I am recording my screen, but I've had some issues with the screen recording. So I will start a time lapse just as a backup. Um, and so I'll just start sketching some watch faces and um, we'll see what we can come up with. A really nice thing about digital drawing is that, especially in this app, Sketchbook Pro, they have these guides. So they have a ruler, like this bendy ruler. I never really use this bendy ruler, but it's there. Um, mainly, they have these ellipse guides and ruler guides, which are in incredibly useful um, for making some clean sketches. So right now I'm just laying out a bunch of perfect circles um, so that I can just make as many versions, uh, that's probably all that I can fit, as many versions of watch faces that I can come up with. Um, and I'm just gonna go for it. For this um, reference here, I like the way that um, this blue circle is sitting at the bottom of this larger gray circle. Um, I just like the composition of that, so I might play around with um, 
and this composition, how these circles are kind of different sizes and different shapes and kind of overlapping one another. Um, so I might play around with some composition. Okay, so I have a few designs that I think have potential. This one, especially, I like. Um, I have a seconds timer. I'm not sure if the movement has a seconds function. If it does, this might work. If it doesn't, um, it'll just be for aesthetic. Hi, hello. This is the next day. What you just saw were sketches from yesterday. Today, I'm going to go into my modeling program of choice, which is Fusion 360, because it is free. I'm not going to follow the sketches that I did exactly. I'm just going to see what kind of 3D forms I can come up with just by referencing the sketches in a general manner. Okay, so the coffee filter took around two hours to figure out how to make, um, but I modeled it, I modeled it. I think it looks great. The first like hour and a half of footage was me just like constantly failing. I'm not going to sift through all that and talk about it because that would be pointless. I am going to talk through like the final version that I did that actually worked. And then I'm going to show you the final models. So I decided to go for the sculpting mode in Fusion 360 just because it's a very organic shape. I started out with a cylinder. I was having a lot of trouble in setting that first loop of edges. It tried to round off that edge and I didn't want that. So I ended up going through a bunch of the features in the modeling mode to see what would work. And apparently there is a crease tool, so that worked. I was doing a little bit of math to figure out how many points I needed for each of the hours. I think it was 36, because I wanted three points to be able to pull one up and then move the other two down, so you get that kind of crescent shape. And obviously you can see here that I tried to do something and it gave me an error. I was trying to fill it that center circle to kind of get a more gradual flattened surface, because I wanted it flat at the center, and then I wanted those ripples to kind of gradually fade out. And that wasn't working, so I ended up having to make another cylinder on top of that, and I filleted that, and so that worked out pretty well. I really like the shape of this uh, fillet, how it looked with, I don't know, the ripples. I just, I, I like this one a lot. And now I just skipped the end part. Um, I ended up with six models. I'm gonna print all of them, probably not all at once, because they might not be able to fit on the build plate, but I'm not gonna film the printing process because, you know, I don't want to. And then, let's see what the prints look like. All right, they finished printing. I printed six at a time. They did get cut off slightly on the ends, um, but they are here. They look incredible. They are incredibly thick for watch faces. They're like two or three mil millimeters high each. Um, so that's something to fix for next time. The coffee filter shaped watch face turned out incredible. I absolutely love that. Um, just think about how that would look in metal. Oh my gosh. I'm also really digging this one. Um, I just like the ring around it. It's kind of hard to see because it's like the same color and there's such tiny little details. But again, these SLA printers can get so detailed, it's insane. Um, so. I highly recommend if you are following along with me, which would be awesome if you were, then print on SLA machines. If you have one at home, awesome. Shapeways and Make Labs both have SLA printing services. Do SLA. FDM printers cannot get this detailed, so that's just what I recommend. Next time, I will probably do some refinement on these 3D models. I'll probably also get the movement from Rotate watches. If you haven't gotten your movement yet, get that with 10% off using the code Nicholas starting on June 26th. Um, I think that code's gonna last like three or so months. So get it while you can. Anyways, I'll see you next time for the second episode of designing a watch from scratch.